I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. Has this ever happened to you? Broken balance connector. Yeah. I'm going to show you how to fix it. It's actually not as hard as you think, but you got to do it right, or you're going to let the fire out. <laughs> Stay tuned. Before I show you how to fix the broken balance connector, let me just take a minute and talk about some of the ways to keep the balance connector from being broken in the first place. Uh, if you've got a battery like this, which, which has the balance connector coming out on the same side as the main discharge lead, a very easy thing to do is to just twist it in between the main discharge lead and then give the main discharge lead a little twist and then it keeps it pretty neat and tidy as long as you keep your main discharge lead from getting hit obviously you're not going to want to go crazy on this if you over twist the main discharge lead it can stress in here where it connects to the tabs but just like one half twist or a full twist and you're good to go now that's not quite as easy for the packs where the balance lead comes out the other side what i often will do for those is i'll just tuck it like so and you can see this is actually the wire has kind of taken the twist. Give it a little bit of a twist and then put that on the quad in such a way that it kind of comes back like this or over the top. It keeps it right up out of the way. Um, some batteries will come. Now, this is a Nubi Drone battery, uh, Nubi Drone Nitro Nectar. Some of them come with a disconnectable balance lead. And that's kind of cool because it means then you just sort of short circuit this whole problem. The problem with this is that and constantly losing these things. So I make a habit of leaving it on the battery. When I go to fly, I put it in my pocket. Then when I get the battery back off, I immediately put it back on. Otherwise, I lose them. Um, some people will leave these plugged into their parallel board or their charger if that's what you, if you have just a bunch of this same kind of battery. But this is always, I thought this was such a good idea when I first saw it. But as soon as I started losing these freaking things, then I can't charge the battery because I can't balance charge and you have to balance charge. Now, I'm a big, big fan of what AC has done with their batteries. They have a really short balance lead, so short that it basically is guaranteed to stay out of the way. And they ship the battery with a little extension like this so that you have a normal length balance lead for parallel charging or any kind of charging, really, or checking your cells. And that might seem at first glance to be kind of the same as what's going on here. But in my opinion, these little extensions are a whole lot easier to get a hold of than these kind of, well, this is not exactly a proprietary connector, but you know, if I had to order a spare, I'm not sure I would know where to go. Back to Newbie Drone, I guess. And these, these will work with any battery that you have. So if you have a parallel charge board and you leave a bunch of these extensions plugged into it to charge your AC batteries, you can also charge any of your other batteries. The last thing I wanna throw out to you guys is just bring a little freaking rubber band with you. And before you go to fly, just go like that. Not rocket science. So then, how do we fix this broken guy? Uh, and the way we're going to fix it is with this. This is a uh, balance plug housing replacement kit. And it's got a bunch of, well, it's got a few things in here we don't need. Like if we were going to make a brand new balance wire we would use this little thing but we're not that's not what we're doing what we're really interested in is these housings here and these are the exact housing that's used on the balance connector and we can actually just replace the one that's on there now there's obviously as you might expect a link to this down in the video description but it, that what it actually is is a two uh js i don't well i gotta find a name for it i can't find it <laughs> now, when you are repairing one of these balance plugs, you got to get the order of the wires correct. If you get the order of the wires wrong, you won't be able to charge the pack and, and your battery checker won't. It'll just be bad. So you got to get it correct. And what you need to know is that the voltages start with zero volts. This black wire here on the left, and that's, you see, we got these two little retention tabs here. So if we put the retention tabs down, the very leftmost one is going to be zero volts, and you can find that by measuring for continuity against the, the main battery lead. And then every one after it is going to be one cell voltage additional. So if the pack was fully charged, we would measure 4.2 volts on this one. We would measure 8.4 volts and so on all the way up. 
So here we are with our multimeter and I'm gonna just, I'm gonna use an alligator clip here and connect the negative probe to the XT60 negative wire, just so I can then work with this hand. And what I want you to see is that the very leftmost shows zero volts. The next one shows 3.8 volts, that's one cell, right? The next one shows 7.7 .7 volts, that's two cells. The next one shows 11.5 volts, that's three cells. And the next one shows 15.45 volts, that's four cells. And that is how they must work. If you were to look at this and go zero volts, 11.5 volts on the second pin, that would be, see, they just have to go in ascending order, basically. Okay, now the easiest way to get this right is just to move them from the broken housing to the fixed housing one at a time in, in the right order. So let's get that broken housing out. Now I want you to notice that although this housing has been broken, all of the pins are intact. You see, we haven't actually cut the wires. So all I'm gonna do is replace this housing. If I had cut wires or broken pins, I might need to recrimp this, or I might need to take a spare uh, spare uh, balance connector from a dead battery and solder it on. If you do decide to do that, make sure that you do not, make sure that you do not cut multiple wires at once because the, the, uh, the cutter will short circuit them to each other. So if you remove a balance connector from a dead battery, cut one wire at a time and then remove it and then solder it back on. So we're gonna start with the leftmost pin. We will start with these little retention tabs down, the leftmost pin, and that is the negative pin. And all I have to do is push down on this little retention tab and it will pull out. There we go, it'll pull out. So it's a little hard to show you, but there's a little retention tab here on the back. And if you just depress that, it should pull right out of the housing. So now we're gonna take the fresh housing and we're gonna make sure it's the right voltage. This is a 4S housing, so you should have one, two, three, four, five, five uh, wires, good. We're gonna put it with the retention tabs down, same position, and we're just gonna slide this guy in to the leftmost. There we go, and it locks in. And give that a tug to make sure it's not gonna come out. It should be nicely secured. Next one is going to be uh, this guy, which got broken. So we will go ahead and slide that in. Fine. And we'll just continue all the way across with each of these. Now, there's a little bit of a snag here, literally, which is that if you start pulling on this and then try to push down, it'll kind of jam the pin. So what you really want to do is push it in I can't really, it's really hard to demonstrate to you what I'm doing, but push it in and without any tension on it, then push down on the retention tab, then try and pull it out. It should be even better with a flat head, to be honest with you. It'd be even better if I had like a second person here to help me, but I'm just gonna come in here and push down. I really need something to push it against, to be honest with you. That would be really helpful. Yeah, this is gonna make a big difference. Ooh, that one came out really easily. That was good. 
Yeah, the trick is that you really have to apply the pressure right on the very end of the tip. If you're pushing here, it won't push down on the retention tab correctly. So you really got to get it in to the very, to the very edge here and apply the pressure there. Otherwise, it's hard to get it out. Now, another thing you might notice is that I'm never having more than one of these wires out of the housing at a time. And that's not just because it helps make sure that I'm putting them back in the right order, left to right, but also because if these two wires were to touch, if any of these two wires were to touch, it would short circuit the cell to itself, to each other, and you would get a spark or even worse, maybe a fire. So it's a good safety procedure when you're working on something like this. If you're replacing an XT60 or a balance plug, only have one naked wire at a time, and then there's no chance that you'll accidentally, sorry, that was my phone, there's no chance that you'll accidentally short them. So let's see if I can do this really good and clean for you guys. I'm going to push it inwards so it's not, I can really get, and I'm going to try to apply pressure as close to the tip as possible, and it should come right out. What a hassle. Maybe some of this stuff would help. Get some of this. This is a fun tack, blue tack. It's very useful for all kinds of things. Let's see if it helps me out here just by holding this in place so I can apply pressure. Once the repair is done, the last thing I like to do is, well, first of all, I'm just going to tug on each of the wires to make sure that they're secure in the housing. And then the next thing I'm going to do is make sure I pinned it out right. And the easiest way to do that is to hook that up to a balance checker. This is the ISDT BG8S. It's a, it's a pretty fancy balance checker. It's like 30 bucks, but it's got a whole bunch of neat features, including quick charge 3.0 so you can charge your phone from the USB off your batteries. That's kind of cool. Um, but you can also just have something like this, which is just a, you know, a few dollars. And you're going to plug in. And what you should see is 3.82321 normal numbers. If it gives you an error, if it says, you know, ah, <laughs> then something has gone wrong. You've got them out of order. And you're going to want to go back with your multimeter and just check the voltages. They should, like I said earlier. Um, if you... Uh-oh. Oh, see? Didn't, I gotta get that in there. Oh, oh, fooey. Wow, we got a little problem here. This little guy's not happy. Here's the problem. The problem is that I gotta, can't get it any, any more zoomed in than that, but the problem is that when I push this little retention tab down, I push it down too much, and it's bent down, and it's not retaining. So I gotta get in there and kind of bend that up a little bit with a flathead screwdriver. That should do it. There we go. <laughs> there you go. There we go. Now we have repaired this balance connector. Isn't that nice? And we are ready to keep using this battery. Uh, I, mean, uh, I, mean, I thought I'd make this video for those who said I was a little too quick to dispose of batteries in the, bat in the video I made a little while back about how to know when it's time to get rid of a battery. How do you know when a battery is not safe to use anymore? I have a video about that, and if you are interested, I'll put a link down in the video description for you to check out. Battery safety is so important. These LiPos are, they are usually pretty safe, but they can be incredibly dangerous if you do the wrong, if you treat them wrong, they will, they'll burn your house down. So uh, that's going to do it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know down in the comments if there's something. What, what else do you want to know about batteries? Let me know. Happy flying.